Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's Fun Friend Friday and Success Life Live, or is it Success Life Live Fun Friend Friday edition? Yes, I have pulled out the Fun Friend Friday Festa Frocks. Why? Because our guest is coming all the way from Key West, Florida. And so I felt like, you know, I needed to get sort of in the vacation Key West vibe. And so I, I had to pull out the fun, fun shirts for today's Fun Friend Friday. So good morning, Mr. Matthew. Yeah, it's festive frock. Good morning, Ale. Um, simply because our guest Liz Akar, who will be jumping in and joining us in just a minute, is all the way from Key West, Florida. Ah, can you imagine? I mean, just think of being in Key West this morning, waking up on an island that's like four by two or four miles by two miles or whatever, um, and just seeing the sunrise. So. Good morning, Miss Nellie. Good morning, Michelle. Good to see you guys all jumping in. Take a moment, say hello. Say how are you. Say whatever you want to say to let the room know you're awake. Good morning, Eric. Quick question. So we'll just pop in with an early question. Good morning, Jessica. Favorite beach place? Like, like if you could teleport yourself in this moment, in this time, favorite beach place, where would you end up? You all know mine. Back in back at our home in Uruguay, walking down the hill to the front of the beach, <sighs> I uh, just being at the beach. Good morning, Liz. Good to see you. We're getting warmed up. Every, Bora Bora, look at you, Al. Just throwing the geography lesson on. Second best beach place, Costa Blanca in Spain. Ah, uh, you know. Let's just face it. Let's be honest. Any beach is a good beach, right? Any beach is a good beach, but. I don't know why we're in beach mode, but we're in beach mode because Liz is here, the author of um, your, You Are Loved. And we're going to go into that. Well, of course, Liz, Key West is your beach place. You get to walk out your front door and be a part of it every day. You only have to go a mile in either direction if you're standing in the middle. Um, so I want to just do a quick little bit of housekeeping and then we're going to have our guests jump in. In the meantime, take a moment, share this out. You know, it's amazing the impact that Fun Friend Friday guests always have. Last week's Jake's has been viewed well over 1,500 times with over 23 shares. He has been bombarded with questions and speaking opportunities and teachers and school districts trying to get a hold of him to bring what he brought to us last week to a larger audience. So there's always somebody on the edge, sort of that extra layer out from this first center point that either needs this message or has been waiting for the message or has been waiting for the introduction to a guest like we have on Fun Friend Friday. Good morning, Zoe. So take a moment and share it out, connect, and make it part of a community thing. So um, quick housekeeping, working on a lot of stuff. So we've got a uh, Monday, we're gonna be doing a um, revisit to the core values because a lot of people had asked about that. And so I've already put together a little worksheet that will go out as part of the weekly email um, newsletter. So make sure you're signed up for that newsletter. It's sort of an add-on. People had asked me, like, what does a core value word sound like? So I put my big, at Punta del Este, Uruguay. Yes, Punta Punta. Ah. La Barra, La Barra, Uruguay. Um, but uh, somebody had asked me what words and what does this sound better than this sound better? So I put my big, awesome list of core values together so and a little bit of an instruction with that so make sure you're on the email list so you can get that and then be tuned in on monday for that as well so it's ericgreed.com forward slash subscribe and also so you can see who's coming up as fun friend friday guests and what they're all about so um there was something else i was supposed to remind you oh q a q a i'm sorry so I've gotten, I've gathered a lot of questions that you guys have all asked or that I've gotten through messages or private conversations and I welcome them, send them, send them, send them. Um, I'm thinking about doing like a Wednesday thing. Liz suggested I call it Wisdom Wednesday, but uh, I'm not sure who the wisdom host would be. Um, so we might just call it, uh, what did you ask Wednesday? And uh, do some kind of Q and A, deep dive into something we maybe talked about that you wanted to hear more about, that you were curious about, that you didn't understand about. So as we go through the week, as we go through these Success Life Lives, if there's something like, what did he mean? Send it to me. 
Because if you have a question, somebody else probably has a question. And part of my job is to make sure that we give you the very best and make sure that you don't go through life with more questions than you need. It's about answers. So our guest today, Liz Akar, um, her book is titled You Are Loved, An Inspired Meditative Visual Journey. And what I love about this book, so I have the digital copy, you guys, because my hard copy is actually in the mail. They had a sellout, and now we have it re republished in second breathing. Um, second, second edition, second edition? I don't know, reprints. It's an amazing book. So I'm gonna go find our guest, Liz, invite her in to join us. Uh, let's see, sorry, Liz. Give me the hello we talked about, the hi, how are you? If you would for me, Liz, so I can find you quickly and invite you in. This is where I just sit and like, do y'all love the, the, the little sort of Florida beach wear vacation outfit? Yeah, it's kind of, you know, I don't know if my kids would want me showing up at the PTA with concert. I don't know, something crazy like that. Looks like it's adding you, Liz. We did the test drive yesterday, so you know how to do this. You just hit the connect button, and we're off and running. <laughs> hey. Ta-da! There she is. <laughs> hey, I'm going to turn the volume down just a little. Hi. Why, am I screaming in your ears? Hi, I know. You've got the beach wear on, and I don't. <laughs> uh, well, I, I was in honor of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Do, do, do people wear shirts like this running around Key West or only the tourists? Well, my na my 88 year old neighbor does. <laughs> so. I'm just going to receive that as a compliment. I'm just gonna, and he I'm... looks amazing in it. He's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I love him. And so, and that's one reason why I wanted to move back to this neighborhood. So that says a lot. So okay. I love that you have it on. <laughs> well, if he runs out, I have a closet full. I, I went on this collection because it's a fun friend Friday frock theme for a while. Um, so thank you for joining me this oh, morning. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Is, is a, it a beautiful a day in Key West? It's pretty much always a beautiful day in Key West. So it's, you know, every now and then it's nice to have a rainy day so I can actually have downtime. So you so. can like clean the kitchen <laughs> cabinets or something. Yeah, I used to live in Portland, Oregon, and it was like I prayed for sun. Now I'm like, I pray for a day of rain. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're never contrast. happy where we're at. We're contrast, at I know. There's always contrast. So, yes. And I thought, wow, we probably should have tested this closer to the beach because here I am in this beautiful island and you get this view of my wall. <laughs> so. Well, but so, hey, you know, as, and in TV radio, they call that a segue. Because your book, A Visual Meditation, um, You Are Loved, what I love about the book, and I'm just going to sort of start with the book, then we'll backpedal, sure. is you're a photographer, you came to Key West two years ago, two and a half? Two years, years it'd be two years June, yes. And you started capturing Key West, and then you've overlaid it with a meditation, an affirmation mm -hmm. kind of um, thing, and when I read through it, it's really, when I say it's, it's weird that it takes you to a place where you yeah. just stop. I mean, yeah. it's just words and pictures. It's yeah. not music and chants and yeah. it's just a few words and a few pictures. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, I am yeah. okay. Yeah. I love that you're saying that. It's, it's, it's hard to describe. And in, in fact, I, when I asked for reviews, I, I did it a little differently because it, it, the whole book has been different. And, and Kim O'Neill, I want to give her credit to you because <laughs> that went through it. And it, it, the, the feedback I'm getting is people just do stop. It just, there's something that draws them in and they just stop and it really is okay. And it opens them up. And when I was reaching out in my, kind of maverick, uh, uh, pioneer way to a best-selling author I know, um, I, she asked me to write up a review that she could kind of edit. And I said, no, it's an experience. <laughs> I said, you know, I will. But if you could actually write from your heart, that would be amazing. And the feedback we've been getting because it touches people, it's an experience. It's not a book. It's an experience. So, I, And I have to say, even um, the digital version because, you know, I'm an yeah. old fashioned paper, but yeah. when I hear statements like within you, what voice wants to be heard? 
Yeah. What vision wants to be seen? Yeah. Breathe in again and notice all the beauty that is around you. And then it's overlaid with these pictures of sunsets and, and yeah. ocean scenes and, you know, the sky in bright burning red or yeah. calming blue. Yeah. I know there's color therapy, aromatherapy. <laughs> I think you were somehow, as you were taking the photos, you probably intuitively tapped into those colors. And then yeah. when you overlay the words, if yeah. you're somebody that, like, I could see this book so perfectly placed in a waiting room, like yes. in a doctor's office yeah. where people are all nervous and, you know, yeah. and then they just read through it and it lowers their blood pressure or yeah. sitting in an office when you've got chaos happening around you. It's like, okay, yeah. I need my book. Yeah. It, it's, and, you know, I'm getting that feedback because several people have said, I need this in my waiting room who do therapy, who do um, social services. Um, I've got a person who is having a, a really, really, really difficult family time going on. And she says, I haven't made it through the whole book. I mean, you could go through the book in less than five minutes, technically. Sure. But she said, I keep stopping because it's two pages and I just look at the spread and it calms me down and I'm able to go to sleep. And I mean, that's, that's amazing to me. That's, you know, the project has felt divinely inspired all along. I've never known why I've just kept following the next step and I'm so excited about what, what unfolds after this um, because it's already touching so many lives. And that's, that's just, I mean, you, you can't hope for anything more. So, you know, and I know you said the digital, but we'll show the copy, the cover of it. There but we go. This is, yeah. Yeah. And just so people kind of have an idea, it just, it walks you through. So it's, and, it's and just photos. like I said, yeah. it's, so like my favorite, my favorite photo yeah. of the day is the, um, oh yeah, yeah. The breathe yeah. in, breathe yeah. in again. And that so relates to what I often teach. It's like the first breath is easy. Yeah. It's the second and then the third that awakens yes. something. And so I love that that yes. meditation piece was put in there, like breathe in again. Like you've been shallow yes. breathing all your life. Now that I've asked you these questions, what needs to be birthed kind of questions, mm -hmm. breathe in and listen. And so, like yeah. I said, it's really, would I say it's kind of <laughs> weird? I don't mean that in a <laughs> negative way. It's just kind of like, it's just a book and pictures and words. Why am I feeling so like, <laughs> oh, cuddly, warm and special after just flipping through it? I know. You know, and, and it's amazing. One of the pages, I'll, I'll try to multitask and hopefully I'll find it quickly. But obviously, I've looked at this book a few times um, through this birthing process. <laughs> and it started very differently. But this page. Um, okay. Yeah, it's the one that is now exhale out all the energy of yesterday. Exhale out any unwanted interactions with other humans. Um, first off, yes, I, I know it's grammatically incorrect. I have been told that. <laughs> so, but to me, the exhale out, sometimes we let this stuff get stuck in us, this energy and this energy that traps us. And as we were running into challenges with the book, that page got imprinted in my head. And so when things come in, it's like, just breathe, just breathe in, breathe in, allow yourself that self-love, that self-care to truly breathe in life and then exhale out anything that, that needs to move, that needs to shift that energy that's got you blocked or stuck or that's keeping you from your joy or your abundance or your love or your fulfillment or your meaning or all those purposes. So I love that about that that one page. I mean, I love the book, but I think that one really impacted me the most. See, and I, I love them all. Like yeah. you, you are a peaceful sunset worthy of inward reflection and appreciation. Yeah. And that it's met. And as a photographer, you're always going sort of out, like what's yeah. just beyond the inches of the lens. What's yes. that image that I'm supposed to capture and the idea that you as a photographer and in the meditation say, wait a minute, this yeah. is a wonderful, beautiful sunset, but what's inside yes. is so much greater. Yeah. It's so yeah. much bigger. And so I think that's when I say, yeah, it's, I mean, I could like flip through it in you know, <laughs> five minutes, Yeah. but when you, what I encourage people to do it when they get the book 
is to really sit down like just like I'm just going to do yeah. a, a visual a day. Like yeah. I'm just going to look at one of the the pictures um and that's why I really think you need to like make it available as screen savers um for your computer. Like yeah. take a moment and breathe. Like yes. okay, that's my whole day. That's like for the rest of the day I'm just going to practice <laughs> taking a moment. See, so what I do is I just take them yeah. and I just sort of like lock them in front of me. Um by moving the images around. Sorry, I'm playing with your book. Like No, I love intended. it. I love it. But I've been yeah. like taking the pictures and because I have the digital copy, I'm able to expand out the picture and just make it my whole screen for the day. Yes. Oh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, great picture. No. <laughs> yes. And I know the person that took it. They happen to be a fun friend Friday guys. Which is really interesting because there are people here that want to write a book or in the process yeah. of writing a book, thinking about writing a book. And we had talked yesterday about the book you've rewritten five, six, yeah. 70 times. <laughs> um, but to make an impact in the world, to change people's lives, to create yeah. the shift is not always, when I say not complicated, yes, the dynamics of putting the book together are, but you can inspire somebody with just a few yeah. words and an image. Yes. And so... Yes. I always some, and one of the things I really sort of coach into is like, check the vehicle because mm. you had a destination in mind. Yeah. But maybe you picked the wrong vehicle to arrive in. Oh, you, you love know? that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, and as you talked, you had, um, I forgot the title of the other book. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. It, it's called, and so it is a joy. So it or, is. Um, um, oh my gosh. A guide to creating your joy filled abundant life. And it's not, it doesn't have an ISBM number, so you can't find it. But um, the goal is within the next 90 days to actually revise the revised, the revised edition <laughs> and, and relaunch it. So I'm hoping within 90, well, three to six months to have that one out there as well. So, well, if you need ISBM numbers, I got like a collection of them. Um, cool. <laughs> you know, you buy, if there, yeah. anybody that doesn't know I'm publishing, you can either like, so at FYI, publishing note, if you go to amazon.com and do self-publishing with their ISBN number, it blocks you from being able to sell your book mm -hmm. off Amazon. So mm -hmm. the ISBN number, if you purchase your own or if you have a publisher purchase it, it allows you access to publish everywhere. Mm -hmm. So for those future potential people that have books on their desk, just know that little trick. Um, yeah. But I love the fact that you have this book. Yeah. Um, and so it is. And then you couldn't quite finish when I say couldn't quite finish yeah. it you didn't feel as if it was time to release it yeah and you switched vehicles <laughs> and by switching vehicles you created joy you created transformation yeah. you created change and it gave you the motiv motivation and momentum and inspiration to go back yes and release the first book yes yes you know sometimes and I've really learned a lot about detachment through this whole process well through the past two and a half years from, you know, we talked about when I got so sick and almost died to now I've, I've learned so much and just really not just talking about detachment, but truly having to detach. And, you know, what I realized was I wrote the book and I needed to see it because that's what really facilitated my change. And maybe no one else ever sees it. And that's okay. You know, sometimes we do something and it's, it's meant for a different purpose than we even envisioned. And so I became really okay with maybe it is just for me and a few people I shared it with, but now it's become, no, it's, it's meant to get out there again. And, and I love that because as we grow and as we shift our vision shifts, and that's where that clarity becomes so important, but also being in tune with who am I right now? You know, what do I want? How is that going to feel? And what would I like to do with that? And I love that if we aren't fixed on one point, we get to keep playing in that and, and that's wonderful, you know? So, but also keep having that goal and work towards it because we can play so much, we never get anything done. So there's a balance in there, you know? Well, and I think it was interesting when we talked about it because you've had a tough two and a half years. I mean, you yeah. suffered a major illness. You moved from Georgia to Key West. Yeah. Your, your partner um, became critically ill and yeah. passed away. Yeah. So here you are at an island in a sense, mm -hmm. like, okay, this was supposed to be a destination, not a new mm -hmm. start. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the middle of all that, you have this book sitting and, and you're carrying it around the universe box like we all have. It's, 
this is it and it's speaking about joy and you probably look down like yeah this is no this is not joy (laughs) this is not it this is not the joy that i signed up for Mm -hmm. and so we had talked about sometimes you you write it sometimes you live it and then sometimes you release it yeah what was the the journey from not being able to live in joy yeah to being like okay i'm out of joy yeah. And now to where you're at now, because two years yeah. is a really small time span to go mm-hmm. through all that you did. Oh, it is. And when I say, I know we talked, when I say I almost died, I, I truly almost died. And not knowing even what was going on, on how to fix you, or if you know, you'll ever be able to walk more than 300 feet or stand, or if my mind will work well enough to remember to how to turn on and off a light switch. I mean, you know, I know the end of the story now, so I'm like, oh, yeah, of course, if you just keep stepping forward, you'll get through <laughs> it, you know, but at the time, you're like, I, I don't think, because I'm, I'm a pretty strong person, I tend to move forward, but I don't think I've really realized how much courage and, and strength it takes to get up each day when you don't know the outcome that next day, and it's, it's, an, it's a different perspective, it's like, why, why do I even want to keep trying? And there were, there were a number of times too there when I'm like, if I check out and I'm not here tomorrow, I'm okay. And there were a number of times when I prayed, take me, you know, take me. Either give me the energy and the strength to move through this or just take me. I'm, I'm good. And that's, that's an interesting place to be. But what it's done is it's opened me up now that I'm on the other side in so many different ways. Um, I've, always, I've always done the same thing I'm doing. I've, I've been in the career 23 years, but... I got lost. I got so lost when I got beat down. I got disconnected. I lost my joy. I think about the movie. I forget the name of it, but I lost my joy. <laughs> you know, That little cute little being. <laughs> and I think when, you know, when we got down here, it was for me to heal. And then 13 days later, my partner was diagnosed with cancer at literally 13 days. And so we started that journey of, of her, and then she passed away in January on my birthday. So from June to January, we were, we were dealing with that. And when she passed away, it was, it was so wild. My dream was to move to an island. You know, I used to, when I was sick, I'd go to sleep watching HGTV and Tiny Island and, you know, and think, I want to live on an island. And I used to tell people, I want to move to Costa Rica and sell ice cream on the beach. Well, I'm not that far from that feeling, you know, I'm now in Key West and I'm selling books by the ocean. So, but when I, when I woke up in January and she'd passed away, it was like, I I felt lost. I don't think I've ever felt that lost in my life. I'm like, I'm on an island. I'm still not well. And I, I don't know what to do, you know? And I really, at that point, I was ready to check out again. And thank goodness I, I'm always one to be connected with coaches, usually more so coaches than therapists. Um, even though I'm a therapist, I know that sounds odd, but I've always, <laughs> it's like, I didn't want to see a therapist. You know, I, I knew I needed to work through the energy and I, I needed the support that a really good, trained, energetic coach could do. And there's energetic therapists that can absolutely do it too. I'm not saying that that's not a possibility. That's what I used to do. But I just, and, and I got drawn to a couple of people that, oh my gosh, they, they really gave me the tools I needed to be able to reconnect again. And, you know, they kept saying, the questions I always ask everyone, well, what do you want? How do you want to feel? You know, why do you want to feel that way? And I'm like, I, I've got nothing. What do you desire? I, I've got nothing. I was so lost. I did not have any idea. It's like, I can go take a photo and come home. And I don't know other than that you know, but that was a good starting point. <laughs> it's like, okay, you can take a photo, you know, and it, it just was an amazing journey. And, and what I have relearned is we get momentum going, we either get momentum going towards our joy, or we tend to get momentum going away from our joy. You know, and that's, it's what, what do we, what feels better? It, it doesn't really feel good to have momentum going away from your joy, but we're always creating if we're really truly creative beings and our thoughts impact our lives, then what we're thinking about is creating our life. And so what I realized was I was thinking more, I don't know how to get out of this. I don't know what I want. I don't know how to move forward. I don't know what joy is anymore. I don't know how to live. I don't, and, and so I kept getting more of, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> you know. So 
when I started asking empowered questions, okay, show me how. I'm open to the possibility. What would it look like if this shifted just a little bit? And sometimes you can't go from truly depression and low level vibrations to pure joy in a flash. But if you can move up one more step on that vibrational level and feel just a little better, even anger is better than depression, you know? And then if you can move up another step, as you keep moving up those steps, you'll find your way to more joy more often. And you just, but it's so hard to do on your own. For anyone who's struggling with it, I absolutely recommend getting someone to help you through it. So, yeah. Well, and y'all, she just dumped like, I'm like trying to take notes <laughs> in my head. She's Now you know why she's been practicing clinical social work and therapy for 20 some years. We either, we're creative beings mm -hmm. and we either create joy or we create, we're, we're gonna choose sadness as the opposite. Yeah. We yeah. either create, mo we're always creating momentum. It's the direction that we sometimes choose wrong. Yeah. And yeah. I love the idea that though you couldn't see and I love that anger is better than depression. Yeah. And I so agree because anger at least acknowledges that even on the, like the most micro yeah. scale, I'm worthy of something yeah. more. I'm angry yeah. at the person that passed. I'm angry at the illness. I'm angry at the doctors yeah. that can't do more. For, it at least says I'm still here. Yeah. And so if you're struggling with that, that mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm depressed. Well, maybe the first question is, and how do I become joyful? But what am I angry yeah. at? Yeah. And let me channel, even though it sounds like a negative emotion, channeling that anger allows you to at least say, wait a minute, I'm worth more from my doctors, yeah. from the person that yeah. left me, from the life that I'm experiencing, from the yeah. boss that fired me, from the body that I'm living in. I deserve more. Wait a minute, what does more look like? Where is it mm -hmm. waiting for me to come to? Mm -hmm. And that yeah. gradual step. So I was going to ask, but it seems pretty obvious now, what kept you from <laughs> retreating? Like, I just arrived. We barely yeah. unpacked. We get hit with this illness. I'm on an island. I don't have a support network. I could easily jump back in the car, go to Tucker, Georgia, mm -hmm. hit the rewind button and start over. Yeah. How did you consciously because i know it had to be a conscious decision mm -hmm. unless it was like mm -hmm. sorry your lease is for another 12 months was through <laughs> um how did you say i'm not going to retreat I, I i'm going forward even if i have to go forward yeah. alone you know there there's something about this island and that was part of the draw here and i mean when you're on a two by four mile island you like you said you're really never more than about a mile away from the ocean i happen to be about two or three blocks from it right now. But there's something <laughs> that, you know, it's like, it's, it, and I, I consciously, because this is my fifth move here. I mean, that's what's so crazy. I used to be this, well, I say I, I was a stable, lived and owned my own home, you know, and moved back into senior management along with my business just to do something different. And I'm here and I'm like, oh, i am moved five times. And, you know, and it's, so it's interesting. But I, the ocean kept calming my nervous system down. And what I find with the mind body work I've done is when our nervous system is jacked up and I'll just use that word when it's jacked up and it, it can be from just thinking, it can be from worry. It doesn't have to be from an immediate stressor. We operate in a different nervous system mode. We can't even access the parts of our brain that does well to work itself out of the problem. It's a different part of the brain. So we have to calm our nervous systems down. We have to calm ourselves down. That's what breathing does. Breathing. And there's actually research showing that yawning does it even better. I'll, I'll just give you that tidbit. <laughs> so, but it looks weird to write a book that say, take a yawn now. <laughs> so, <laughs> yawn in again. <laughs> so, so. I'm going to start opening workshops with that. Everybody, let's yawn. And they'll be like, oh, thank God, I've been holding it back all morning. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. But it helps calm that nervous system down. And it helps us access the part of the brain they can actually do things differently and energetically it shifts us. So I kept going to the ocean and the ocean would calm me down and I would be able to in that moment be as present as possible and just say, 
you've got the skills, you've got the tools, remember to use them. Because when you're so stressed and you're not in that place, you forget you even know these things. You know, that's, that's where it has, it, it helps to have others remind us, breathe. Oh yeah, I can breathe. I mean, it sounds so simple, but you forget, you forget. And so reconnecting, going to the ocean and reconnecting kept giving me the strength. And I, I would meet people by the ocean because it's a beautiful place where people from all over the world come to go see. And somehow I would be able to step out enough to be connected in that moment. And it fed me enough that I was like, wow, there's so much more out here. And I would keep pulling into that. And the people on the island were amazing. I mean, I, I could not have asked for better support. It just, they, oh, it just truly, I feel so blessed. And, and, what I've also realized is this is where I was supposed to be for my healing. And so when you are aligned, the things come together. The ocean was there to heal me. The people came to heal me. And it wasn't easy. I mean, there were days when it was hard to get out of bed, um, you know, physically, emotionally. It, it was hard, but something, thank goodness, I kept going to the place that calmed me down. And in, in Tucker, Georgia, I'd have probably stayed home. And if I'd stayed there, I dare say I might not be alive today. And I fully believe that. I truly, fully believe that. So, and the pictures actually started as a way for me to share the essence of that moment with my partner. Because it, I, I didn't want to take a picture of the sunset. I wanted to take what I was experiencing at that sunset. So it was never meant to have anything else done with them. And they're all with my phone. I don't even own a camera. <laughs> you know, that's so, what so many people I, I don't that... even know. I think there's like, again, the idea that what you, I, I believe that every object holds the energy, mm -hmm. you know? Um, mm -hmm. And so as you were taking that, that photo, you, you yeah. had an intent, you had a yeah. purpose. We got Melanie Massey yeah. here. I don't know if you know her, but she's a phenomenal artist. She infuses oh. not only life, but mm -hmm. art with her whole body and soul. Nice. And I think, you know, it's an example. So my son, who I say has an artist's brain, I'm beginning to think he has no brain, but that's 10-year-oldism. <laughs> One day we were looking at a picture and I, I was like, so what do you think of it, my little artist? And he goes, it's too loud. And I thought, oh. what an interesting word. Not busy, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. confusing, mm -hmm. but loud. And I thought he heard the yeah. picture versus saw the picture. I think yeah. that may be why the book is so phenomenal is yeah. because you had an intention behind the yeah. photo mm -hmm. and that followed the photo. Yeah. Um, I want to go back to the, going to the beach and healing. What's interesting is our body, this mm -hmm. vessel mm -hmm. is designed for self-preservation. So mm -hmm. it will shut down unnecessary yes. hard drives and, turn off the bathroom lights, so to speak, if yeah. nobody's in there because yeah. its primary function is to keep the heart beating, keep the lungs feeling, mm -hmm. and everything ex outside of that kind of becomes secondary. Yeah. When we're under stress, and I say this for people that sometimes are struggling with depression, it is a chemical, it is a biological, it, the, mm -hmm. it is not just, I need to have a better affirmation in my yeah. head. Yeah. It is our body working to recreate balance after a traumatic input. Mm -hmm. And so being able to calm the physical body, to be able to breathe yeah. deep, to take it out of that flight or fight mm -hmm. moment that we created during that traumatic event or that series of traumatic mm -hmm. events or thoughts allows it long enough to say, okay, we are not in danger at this moment. Mm -hmm. I can give you a little blood to the thinking part of yeah. your brain, to the yeah. processing part of your brain, to the creative part of your brain. So when we talk about meditation, when we talk about energy, mm -hmm. talking about it being in alignment, and some people will be like, oh, that's so West Coast, or that's so Key West. <laughs> they all sit around and wear funny shirts and you know, <laughs> smoking some of this stuff. It really does have a biological yeah. basis that if you don't take time for the body and the mind to yeah. move out of that fight or in flight stress mode, then you don't have energy to move into the creative mm -hmm. next step. And yeah. when I say that, it does not have to be you being chased down by a lion. Mm -hmm. It can just be the uncertainty that's projected on the news that you're listening to, or the rushing every morning to get the kids out of, mm -hmm. you know, the stress level you create getting them on the bus. 
so good for you for seeing like, look, I can't begin to use this thing to figure out what to do mm -hmm. until I get yeah. this other thing yeah. in a state of non-fear. Yeah, yeah. And you know, and it doesn't take long. And I think that's what people don't realize. I do, um, I think it was 240 live trainings last year. And one of the things I tell them, if you remember nothing from this training, remember that just in one minute, you can alter your physiological state and your brain state just by taking a few deep breaths, you know? And if we just did that several times a day, it's amazing how much more energy we would have, how much more clarity we would have. Even doing that and being intentional by adding those questions in, well, what do I want? You know, how do I want to feel? Why do I want it? And that what do I want and how do I want to feel? What I find is people tend to think about what I don't want. Okay, I, what do I want? I don't want to feel stressed. You know, I don't want to feel anger. Um, I don't want the, and, and if we keep doing that, we keep getting more. So we have to be very intentional about the questions we ask. Well, what do you want then? I want more freedom. I want more joy. I want to feel happy. I want to feel, you know, whatever it is. So those questions even lead into how are you looking at those questions and start noticing what you're noticing? How does my body feel? What is my mind thinking? You know, how is my life rolling? If it's, you know, not, if it's a little bumpy, I might need to smooth up my ride a little bit, you know, and I might be able to do that by saying, I can get off this really bumpy road over here and hey, there's a paved, a paved highway, you know, but maybe we want the bumpy road for a while, you know, so yeah. So Melanie Massey has said that she wants to connect and do a, a retreat in Key West. Oh, like, who doesn't want to do a retreat oh, in Key West? Hey. <laughs> I, you know? I'm off. I've got the wardrobe. You um, do. Melanie, reach couple, out. She posted a couple um, authors that share your belief. And so interesting when you talk about what is it I want to feel. And I did sort of a quick visualization the other day through this where I said, so if you want to feel peace, Close your eyes, find a time in your place, an event, a person that, yeah. that holds that feeling. Now bring that time and event or person into your current now. Mm -hmm. Now disconnect the feeling from the event person, mm -hmm. hold the feeling, so now you're at peace. You yeah. own that peace, not contingent yeah. upon an external event, mm -hmm. but simply because you were a creative being and you created that feeling, so now why yes. can't we create that feeling at lunchtime, at dinner time, in yes. the car ride. Yes, I love that. I love that. Are you familiar with heart math? A T A R T M A T H, no. just like it sounds. Um, and it's math, I'm probably going to suck <laughs> no, at it. No, it's so. not. It's not. It's a biofeedback tool that's amazing. But they talk about that breathing. And, and I, I never ended up doing the stuff I needed for certification, but I went through the program and I use it with my clients and myself, but it talks about that. Um, come from your heart with something you love, you know, take that time to stop and think about it and really get in that feeling and that enjoyment. And what does that feel like? And, and what it does is it starts becoming more coherent also with the brain. It's fascinating. And it's a way to start literally shifting um, the neuroplasticity of our brain, without going too geeky, literally learning how to create new neurons that support our joy and our thoughts and our betterment. Like I said, I love the geeky and I, I love so, playing no, that, but so, I love the so, so, if I, so if I practice yes. creating joy, then my brain learns how to get there faster? Yes, it starts, learn, it starts wiring to look for more joy. So if I like took... 10 photos that to me spell joy, mm -hmm. kept them on my phone in a folder called joy. And I would take a minute every day and just flip through my yeah. joy folder. Yep. Yeah. My brain would start to say, okay, you need more photos for your folder kind of thing. You need it, more. I need to, go, clearly you're attached to this thing called joy. So my job as your brain yeah. is to go find more of it because if it feeds you, then that feeds me. Yeah. And therefore we stay alive longer. Yeah. So. Yeah. So yeah. it's really self-serving of the brain to go find more joy. <laughs> yes, because that self-serving brain wants us to, it, it draws us to the familiar, you know, and if we're in, I hate to call it drama, but if we're in drama or non-joy or things that are bringing us down and the other, even joy can be a threat because it's not familiar, 
you know, and it's like, well, why would I not want joy? Well, that brain, that part of our brain that's so old that, you know, that, that looks for that status norm, it holds us back. And it's like, oh, joy. You know, you'll see people say, oh, I have joy, but now I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. You know, what happens? And, exactly. and it's like, we're, now we're looking for things that are unlike joy because I know something is going to happen to my joy. And the brain does that. And if we've ever had any um, kind of energetic hits or things that have happened when we've had joy, we can get stuck in that because now we've patterned joy brings pain. And so it's fascinating. So using literal tools and processes to learn how to rewire our brains for success becomes so important. And, and that's, you know, I, I play in the energy, I play in the mind part of it, but, you know, I don't, I don't care if you're scientist, scientific, if you're woo woo, wherever, there's room for all of it because the research is starting to show what other people have been saying for decades and centuries, really, you know, so. so and it makes, I mean, when I say it's so logical, that's why it's probably yeah. so not common. What is it? Common, common knowledge is not common practice. Mm -hmm. So I remember one time I was with my son, we had been at karate class. He, we were walking out and I said, dude, you like nailed it, like compliment, you nailed it. You were yeah. so attentive. I was really proud of you stepping up, blah, blah, blah. And I said, but, and he said, oh, so none of it was right. And I was like, no, I was, the but was going to be, remember, you don't put your shoes on, on the mat. Like, like yeah. you, like I saw the one percent. Yeah, yeah. He was focused on the ninety-nine yes. percent of success, but when I called out the one percent, what became interesting was you could almost see him for a yes. period of time. Every time I started to give him a compliment, yeah. you could see him like brace for yep. the other part. Yep. I was like, and I had to like be so cautious about remembering to stop it, like yes. compliment, and then physically run out of the room if you have to, Eric, yeah. because you have conditioned him that every compliment carries a little mm -hmm. bit of criticism or room for improvement. Yeah. When we talk about creating your joy in your life, you can't, I'm trying to think, so we can't ex have the experience in the experience. You have to say, okay, I'm going to take two minutes experience joy in a contained safe way yeah. so that it begins with joy and ends mm -hmm. with joy if i wait until i go to the family dinner go to mm -hmm. the big event mm -hmm. and i'm standing in mm -hmm. joy it's a different process for the brain because it's like yeah okay i don't get what's going on this is unfamiliar territory yeah. i'm on my red alert so if you want joy if you want happiness love prosperity abundance whatever mm -hmm. in your life you need to find a time, a minute to whatever yeah. you can afford yeah. and say, okay, I'm going to own it in this space yeah. and time solely for me. Yeah. I'm not going to worry about it being taken away because there's only me here yeah. and only me yes. can take it away. Yes. Yes. You know, it's Eckhart Tolle talks about the power of now, but it's so true in this exact moment is all really well in this moment, you know, but the brain then looks for the future and it looks at the past and says, Oh, I'm on guard. I'm on guard. You know, this might happen. But if we really pull it back to the present, you know, how can I feel in this moment? And then this present becomes that next moment and that next moment and that next moment. And so whenever we start getting into that place where it's like, Oh boy, here we go. You know, you're too big for your britches. You're whatever it is. We just come back to, is that really true in this moment? You know, it's interesting because as much as I teach this, and, and I always teach, it's not a matter of if, it's when. Whenever you start pushing your comfort zone, maybe your comfort zone is being a more joyful person. I mean, that, that sounds kind of odd, but I find that. I find it. People forget how to have joy. People forget to think about what would I love? What would I desire in my life? Because we're so stuck in the conditions that are going on right in this moment that I can't even imagine the possibility of of more in my life. And I tell people when you start shifting, it's really not a matter of if, it's a matter of when that discomfort, that pull to the familiar is gonna come in and try to draw you in. And it looks different for everybody, but it's those voices. Who do you think you are? Joy, you know, you're too big for your britches. You don't know enough. Um, it, whatever it is, everyone's message is different. And, and that's that point when we get to learn to do something different to stretch or we come back into that familiar 
And that's where people often stop, you know, and say, see, I can't do it. I can't do it. Look at New Year's resolutions. That's a perfect example. <laughs> you know? Well, and often the, and I agree, and often I think we, we can't do it because we're already focused on the failure point in the future. Yes. Yes. As opposed to the success in the moment. Yeah. When I when I need to, to get back to that moment, I'll often say, just here, just now. Yes. I am joyful. I am happy. Yeah. I am proud. I am confident. Yes. Just here, yeah. just now. Just and I have to do that mm -hmm. just here, just now. Like, mm -hmm. like yeah. almost like beating my head with a frying pan sometimes yeah. because that drunk monkey of chaos that's like, mm -hmm. no, it can't be this easy. It can't be this safe. Yeah. We need to find a distraction because otherwise I'm not worthy if I'm not mm -hmm. challenged, if I'm not mm -hmm. fighting against the world, yeah. if I'm not in sadness. You know, my, my parents, God love them. German <laughs> Lutheran mechanical engineer. I'm, my, <laughs> my, my dad is starting to find joy. He's 80 something <laughs> now, he's now understanding it. But he would always say, well, we just don't have time for fun. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. and what time do we have for fun? Yeah. And I still, to this day, will look at my day and be like, you know what, as great as it would be to go outside and play with the kids or whatever, mm -hmm. I got to get these things done for, like, work first, play later. Mm -hmm. And in my world growing up, there was always more work yes. and later play. Yes. And that conditions us to not allow ourselves to just breathe. Mm -hmm. and be present mm -hmm. in the now because yeah. all the work really doesn't do much. Walk us through like, like creating a joy because I told everybody we're going to talk about creating joy. Creating you, joy. So you went through, and I'll give you a minute to sort of settle in sure. and figure it. You went through, okay, I packed up and left Tucker, Georgia. Probably mm -hmm. not a hard decision. Um, <laughs> <laughs> except for our buddy Al. Except for it our was. buddy Al. Um, <laughs> So pack up and leave Tucker, Georgia, move into a new place in Key West, trying to manage it with a critical chronic illness, but knowing that if I could at least get there, the last days would be better than the mm -hmm. first days mm -hmm. of the illness. Finding out on your birthday, oh, by the way, you know, just one more thing we forgot. I have cancer, honey, um, and we get to deal with this. And then having that pass, you had to become very conscious of guarding your joy when it mm -hmm. was so small mm -hmm. and then feeding it and magnifying it. Yeah. Somebody that's like where you were, but under their own situation, <clears throat> what was like a daily practice, a daily thing aside from going to the beach? Yeah. Because being at the beach wasn't it. It was what was occurring yeah. at the beach. Yep. Walk yep. them through that. You know, <clears throat> it's, it was finding that intention of, actually, it was just hope. <laughs> it was hope that things really could get better and taking an action that could take me one step closer to that desire for that day. And it wasn't always joy. It was, how can I, how can I do my best in this moment to feel as good as possible? And that as good as possible might not be joy, and how can I find a way to find some peace within it? So for me, it wasn't really joy. It was peace. How can I find peace in this moment? And it's <laughs> when you have something going on and everything unlike peace comes up, there's a lot of contrast. It's really easy to get focused on non-peace. You know, the, the worry of tomorrow, the what has happened, the all of the apparent things that are going on in life, which are very real, you know, but you can't escape them. <laughs> you can't escape them. Um, but how do I learn to find peace in this moment right here, right now? You know, like we both alluded to this very moment. Can I do something to find some peace? You know, worry about the next moment later. You hear it in 12 step programs. You know, <laughs> it's, it's one minute at a time, if need be one day at a time, um, one moment at a time, and breaking it down into that, because at that point, it wasn't, gosh, I want to create this, or I want to do that, or I want to do this. It was, how do I find peace in this day? And that became the thing I was striving for. Now, as you start working through the contrast, and maybe that's all you can do for a while. And that's, if you find some peace, 
even that is a beautiful thing because sometimes it's really hard to find peace when the apparent peace is nowhere near. So maybe that's a huge success. You had five minutes of peace today. You had an hour of peace today. You know, you had five hours of peace today. Even a moment in, in despair of peace is huge. And, and, and so I think realizing that it's not about doing it perfectly because there is no perfect. It's about how do I find, if it's not joy, and joy seems totally uh, out of <laughs> even a, a possibility, maybe it's peace. Maybe it's peace. So how do I choose when that thought is taking me away? What practices can I put into place to remember to come back and choose right here, right now in this moment to choose peace, you know, and then if that kind of gets sidetracked, okay, I get to re-choose it. I get to re-choose it. And the more times you can consciously remember to re-choose it and do an Ooh. action for yourself. And it's that conscious part because we do it unconsciously. We have to consciously remember. So I put signs up, <laughs> you know, I, I would stay connected on a daily basis with something that would help inspire me or remind me. Um, I had to take conscious, intentional action to find peace each day um, and show up for that peace, that possibility of peace, or I never would have had it. That's you guys. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Show up for the possibility of peace. Mm -hmm. Be intentional about finding the possibility of peace. Mm -hmm. We all spend a lot of time laying in bed when the alarm clock goes off, thinking about the possibility of pain, the mm -hmm. possibility of hardship, the possibility of frustration and anger and discipline. Yeah. Like we all show up ready and armed for that. Yeah. What if you said today, I'm going to awaken to the possibility of peace. Yes. Just the pot, just, not even like yes. the, the manifestation of it, but just the possibility that throughout this day, I will find a moment of peace. And I am very big on like, I, partly because I think I'm a visual person, partly because I'm just mm -hmm. a clutter hog, but I've got like <laughs> all kinds of knickknacks in my office and objects, yeah. which mean nothing to anybody. Yes. Yes. Um, but when I look at them, it takes me to a place besides where I'm like here and now. It takes me to something that like brings me joy, brings me happiness, yes. brings me a moment of reflection. And I'm like, okay. So it's a yeah. whale bone fin thing <laughs> from the beach in Uruguay. But just seeing yeah. it, connecting with it. Yes. Maybe it's a, a two second moment of, of yes. breathing and release. Remember that this if we want to take it to the scientific side, is the biofeedback to our body that says you are safe enough in this moment. Yeah. And remember the body and the mind really aren't constrained by the clock on our watch or the, mm -hmm. you know, the clock on our mm -hmm. wall. You are safe in this moment. I will yeah. allow you to have creativity, to have thought, to have clarity, yeah. because yeah. I don't need to be on red alert because I feel a moment of peace, mm -hmm. a moment. Yes. So often when we're trying to pedal our way back, it's like we try and get on the Tour de France circuit. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm coming back. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, really? Because first yeah. of all, you don't even know how to buckle yourself into the pedals. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. just, so I love the idea of having signs around your house. And I imagine yeah. when guests would come, they're like, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> Try to make them a little subtle. And then what you talked about, having those pieces and those anchor, it anchors a feeling in. So it actually provides something when you see it that anchors in with a memory. So I love that you do that. And I have some of those too. Yeah. Well, this is the largest, you know, our, our, our skin yeah. is the largest organ. Yeah. And so maybe I, I just, for me, it's like, I can, I mean, this, this one is one of my, yeah. I've got this great little thumb hole. That I, I love just, it. Like, sit and, I'll be like, oh man, oh, the yeah. beach and, the, uh, and it just, it brings yes. me a moment of joy. Or, yes. Um, so I'm, yeah. I'm, I love so it. So like this one, so these were, see, I'm right near my clutter oh, space. Oh, cool. Yeah. So these are little elephants that were card holders and I have four of them because they were used at the adoption party as oh, place yeah. card holders. And so when I look at it, it reminds me of the day we had the adoption process and the adoption nice. party and all of this. 
This is from my daughter. I have no idea why she thought this was the best <laughs> pen from me. I, I barely use the pen, but she bought it with her money and she thinks oh. it's me and I'm just going to like, okay, oh, girl. You're, you're a glitter shining dad. <laughs> I guess. Um, I know I'm going through some of my collections. This is her doll that she hated. And it's supposed to say, ooh, la, la. And it, <laughs> <laughs> and and she hated the doll because it would always say ooh la la and so <laughs> she gave it to me as well to keep in my oh, office. I think she really fun. got scared of it. But that's what I mean. All of yeah. those little things, as foolish as it is, when I pick up the doll and it goes ooh la la, a friend yes. of mine that was around when the doll got creative will always email me or text me and just go ooh la yeah. la. <laughs> and it just, they, I mean, it brings laughter to you. It brings laughter to me. Yep. But, that's what I mean, you guys. We've yeah. got to begin to surround ourselves intentionally with joy. Yes. And whether it's in objects or photos or songs or, you know, yeah. pieces of jewelry. And then what we have to do is put it on our calendar as important as getting our oil changed and say, yes. I'm going to take two minutes, yes. control joy, own joy, be a part mm -hmm. of joy. No one will come and touch it, take yeah. it or our, alter it. Because in doing so, my brain now learns mm -hmm. joy is us and we yes. are joy and it goes out and yeah. seeks it. The reticular yeah. activator kind of yep. mentality. Yeah, Ab absolutely. You know, and, and contrast will always come. But the more that we are focused on that joy and aware, and, and it's all about awareness and being conscious of how we're living in the moment, then we get to use tools to either allow ourselves to process that energy because it's not about not having joy. If we get that other energy that happens in a day stuck in us, we're just building up more pressure. But if we allow ourselves to process that emotion and that energy and, and let it flow through us, then we get to move back to joy or peace. And so a lot of people say, well, it's about hiding your emotions. Oh no, 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 no. It's processing your emotions. Those things get stuck in there and it throws us off. I had and, a, yeah. And I think it's very much the idea of like going shopping for clothing yeah. and you pick up something off the rack and you're like, well, this is nice, but it, it really isn't my size, my color. Yeah. This isn't, yeah. you know, there was a time I might have worn this, but yeah. it just doesn't seem like me right now. Yeah. Interesting that it's here, that I picked mm -hmm. it up, that I managed, you know, I handled it. Yeah. But no, I think I'll put it back on the rack. It's not in alignment with what I'm looking yeah. for for this day, for this event, yeah. for my new life. And so yeah. if we try and just like bury it in the bottom of the cart and act like we didn't see it, then it's always yeah. going to be following us around. But if we yeah. acknowledge it, like, you know, anger. Yeah, there was a time I would have gotten angry about this. Mm -hmm. There was a time I would have let this person's opinion affect yeah. me. But I've been sitting in joy so much lately. This just doesn't fit. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that. You know, and if you take that piece of clothing home and you wear it and you're like not really aligned with, oh, this feels so good and all that, it's going to come through. So we get to, we get to wear, we get to, I love it. We'll go with the analogy. We get to create our own wardrobe and find the one that, that fits and feels good and we can strut around with and not in an ego way, but I'm aligned and I feel good. And what's beautiful is the more we can get to that place, the more contagious it is around us. And then people start going, what's going on with them? If you, you know, if it's completely new for you, or they say, I want to do that too. How do you do that? And I love that it creates that beautiful positive ripple effect. The more we can be healed, the more we can stand in our light and share that, the more we can come from love and joy and fun and playfulness, the more we get to impact lives that can even impact it generationally. And that's beautiful. That's so beautiful to me. See, I love that because, you know, as a John, John Maxwell always says, leadership is influence, yeah. nothing more, nothing less. But joy is leadership. Yeah. Happiness, it is. love, peace. If you stand in mm -hmm. that and you're able to vibrate in that mm -hmm. space, then you're influencing those around you to have yeah. joy, love, peace, yeah. happiness, fulfillment, yeah. acceptance. And so, you know, it doesn't always have to be the big iron fist of leadership. No. It can be the, the, the spontaneous laughter. It's yeah. something very ridiculous that pretty soon the whole room is yes. influenced by that. Yes. And so... I love, I, I love, I know, I do, you know, it, I am so, 
I love the fact that now you're influenced. Like two years ago, when you were trying to crawl your way out of bed and yeah. all of the hardship, could you really see today? Like being able no. to pedal your bike to the beach and having no. people say, this silly book has touched me. No, no. You know, um, I tend to be positive. So most of the time when I was sick, I, I did stay optimistic. I, but I never, I thought I, life might not be as I know it period. How do you learn to become a new you? So there was always that hope. And, and there was one point when I was, I mean, they talk about the near death experiences or the, I had that. And what was so interesting was I kept getting, you can go, what is your choice? And, and literally that night where I wear a Fitbit, my pulse got so low, I, I was close to death that night. And it's in that moment when I chose, I don't want to go yet. I feel like there is more to do. I don't know what it is, but I still have more to do. And, you know, for the longest time, I didn't know what it was, you know, and it's still, you know, I keep playing, but I never would have thought a book would have been birthed with photos I took as a healing process for me. I mean, it's, it's amazing, but it's, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. And it's not just that I've got, you know, I'm so excited to be coaching people internationally now. Um, you know, I, I serve um, with wellness trainings here uh, Our you know, our, first responders, and I used to be a psychiatric first responder, so I have a special place for them, our admin staff, the county employees I do wellness trainings for, and, you know, everything that's opened up and more continues to open up as I continue to get healthier, and, and I'm really close to being, I'm, I'm probably 90, 95%, more is opening up, and I love that, and, and it's bigger, but it's with more knowledge, and I think until I talk with people like you and other people, it, it's what you said. I don't really even know everything I know, but I know a lot. And, and it's time to start sharing more of that with people because I just think, well, of course everyone knows this. Well, they really don't. And, you know, and, and if I can help somebody think just a little differently, just by tweaking their thinking a little, it doesn't always have to be big, but those tweaks, you know, I, I talk about, being on course, off course, because we're navigational here. You know, we got a lot of boats. We've got the plane. <laughs> <laughs> you live on an island. You better have a way We live to on an off. island. <laughs> we have a bridge. But, you know, where do you want to go? And if you're, it's like a GPS. If you set it and you start getting off course, the quicker you can get realigned, then the quicker things will start happening. And sometimes it's just a small tweak to somebody to say, honey, just turn to the right a little. <laughs> you know, it's okay. And, and they're like, oh, and that's all it takes. And, and those ahas can change lives. And then they create a ripple and they change lives. And I mean, it's really, I've got a renewed passion for doing this again. So, yeah. See, that's why we're, we're kindred spirits, as my friend Adam Green Gables would say. Yes. Um, because like the success life life every morning, it's, it's, a, you know, I realize it, what it is. It's just like, okay, I dropped it yeah. on the ground. Maybe it's to be picked up. Maybe it isn't. Yeah. Same thing with Fun Friend Fridays. It's not the same thing as coaching where you're more intimately long-term engaged. Yes. But it is providing that little bit of a nudge mm -hmm. to, to move the, the compass yeah. back into more of alignment or at least yep. allowing somebody to see okay, I'm out of alignment, and I always believe you've chosen to be out mm -hmm. of alignment, consciously or unconsciously, mm -hmm. you've chosen to go off course. Now, we don't need to stay yeah. off course, but if you chose it, why? Yes. And yes. then, yes. is there a purpose for the detour, or did you just allow old belief systems and thoughts yes. to come back into it? And yes. so, I love that analogy of just Sometimes it's just about turning the dial half a click. Yeah. And it creates a whole different perspective. Yeah. I, like I said, the, the, when I say the book, I, I mean, I love the fact that I got the digital <laughs> copy because I get to use it, like, like I said, it's screensavers. <laughs> I know. And I like, know. like I had the other day this whole thing. Well, I, I almost have it where I just had it facing me while it was playing music in the background that said, you are loved. And then I, I slid oh. down to the image. Um, where was the, uh, this one. So then I just took it and I, I scanned it out to, whoop. Oh. <laughs> and this one is the one that is um, breathe in this moment. Oh, and so nice. I just sort of take them and I, and I alter the picture. So it takes up my whole iPad. Nice, nice. And then I'll just have my music playing on my desk. And so when yeah. I glance over at it, 
and has yeah. a moment of inspiration. So that's the next creative project for you is to figure out yeah. how to protect it and yet still make it accessible yes. with like a rolling yep. video yep. kind of thing yep. because yep. Um, you're right. And maybe, I've got some and maybe get the right meditative music behind it where yes. it or the ocean in a loop. The ocean, yes. I've got so, a few ocean tapes on mine. Uh, <laughs> laptops just, just for yeah. those days when I'm in the middle of Georgia. You know, um, I, I kind of thought if there's probably an app for that, but I need an app designer because I've got all these visions that are coming as next steps, but it's like how beautiful if you could choose that picture and align it with a song or music or whatever and have that for your daily practice. But I need an app designer. So if there's any app designers out there, that might be a fun thing to create. Now, so. We're going we're gonna to change that. We're going to decree and clear, so to speak. <laughs> the app designer that listens to this, please get in touch with me so we can take it to the next place. Wouldn't that be fun? Yes, because digital and some other ideas on big, big, big scale to really try to reach people are, are here and they're, they're starting to move forward. But sometimes you've got to take that next step for those next few. So I'm knowing it's all aligning so that, that I know what's up here. And so as it's coming out, the people that it's resonating with to touch base with me that can fulfill the tech part for other things as well, like how to best have it show up. I know the energy is coming and they're coming in the right and perfect timing. I truly believe oh, it. I, I totally. I, know it. And I don't believe it. I, I know it. It's so funny because like the people that, so Fun Friend Friday is really like my favorite place because there's people that we've had an event like this or we've yeah. done it, a thing like this. And then they'll call me a day, a month, six months later, and they're yeah. like, you're not going to believe what happened as a result of that Fun Friend Friday. And I'm in no way taking the credit. It's the energy around it. Yeah. And I'm like, really? And they're like, yeah, so-and-so was watching it, and they talked to so-and-so, and then so-and-so. And now, now I'm doing I'm like, it's because, and I really don't think it's, when I say I know it's not this, I think it's because we speak it. Yes. And for the yes. first time, a lot of people have never spoken it outside of their bathroom, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. And yeah. so by speaking it on such a non-bounded platform yes. as a live or in social yes. media, then it has a place to ripple bigger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. that's why I do encourage you guys, always take a moment and share it. And share it. Yeah. With, when you share it, say why. And it's, you know, it's not my social media ego that I made 52 shares. It's the idea yeah. that there is one layer out from mm -hmm. what's currently present, yes. that yes. that may be the layer that creates the change or two yeah. or three, you know, it's that seven yeah. degrees of separation from yeah. Kevin Bacon kind of thing. Yeah. That the people that I bring to Fun Friend Friday have servant hearts, have want to impact mm -hmm. the world, want to give to the next mm -hmm. level. Yeah. And we only have so far that we can reach as yeah. individuals, but collectively we could circle the globe in 30 yeah. seconds. Yes. And so when I talk about sharing it out, when I talk about talk, mm -hmm. becoming a community and a tribe, that really is my heart, is that mm -hmm. somehow an idea, mm -hmm. a thought, a belief, this understanding that in the moment of depression, in the moment of sadness, joy mm -hmm. is too big. Mm -hmm. Just a, a moment, a breath of peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah could be the salvation for somebody. Absolutely. And they're not going to know that without somebody else pointing them yeah. in that direction. Yes. Yes. I love that. And you are, you're a beautiful conduit and that's what I am. I'm just a conduit, you know, <laughs> and, and I'm just, when that inspired step comes, I'm like, are you kidding me? All right. That's my <laughs> human mind. I'm like, you gotta be nuts. And I'm like, okay, just do it because the voice will not go away. <laughs> so it's like, I've just learned. You know, that feeling, that voice, I'm going to be awakened at 3 or 4 a.m. if I don't just take action. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I, I joke, there's this, I think it's Netflix, it might be Hulu, but it's called <laughs> OA. It's a series, don't watch it, it's too addictive. Once you've watched one, you have to binge watch the whole thing. But I have a, I have a tumor, but the tumor has created a ringing in my ear, and they say it's because you're, you're time jumping and all of this, and I'm thinking... <laughs> All this time, I thought it was God's voice in my ear that I wasn't paying attention to. I'm so relieved it's because I'm the time traveler and I'm out of alignment with my right time. Oh, so I so do. Fun. I sometimes will hear the ringing and I'm like, okay, God, if you could just change the ringing to yeah. words, we'd be much better off. Yeah. Um, but you're or right. big when neon you're... sign. You know, yes. sometimes I need the, and sometimes I literally get the, the sign. <laughs> it's like, you know, I'm like, 
whoa, wow, or it comes through other people. And that's the thing when you're saying, what do you do? When you put that dream out, when you put that idea and that desire out, things come in ways you might never expect. So let go of the how, you know, allow it to come in. But when you get nudged to look at that next website or to speak to that person or to turn left instead of right, pay attention because that's when the beauty tends to happen, the magic. It's like, uh -huh. wow, I could have never predicted the way so many of my things have, I could have never predicted from day one, all of that, that would have happened, but just keep saying yes to that inspired nudge. So I yeah. love that. Say, so that's your challenge today, guys. Yeah. If say yes to one inspired nudge. Mm -hmm. You'll probably get 20 or 30. Yeah. Um, and in the chaos of picking up the kids and cooking dinner yeah. and going to the office and running to the bank, you might not hear yeah. But just say, I'm open to the possibility of peace, yeah. and I will say yes to one inspired nudge today. Yeah, and, and take that and minute. To, yeah. Take that minute and, to stop and breathe so those inspired nudges can even talk to you. <laughs> so. Yeah, I have, uh, it's funny because so many of my creative artist friends are always in touch with those inspired nudges. Yeah. yeah. And um, because of just my, my nature, it's hard for me to get there. And so there's coloring books that are like Mandela coloring books. They were really yeah. popular in Uruguay. But if nothing else, get out a box of your kids' crayons or go yeah. buy your own and just sit yeah. and doodle. Because in that distracted doodle, mm -hmm. that inspired creative nudge sometimes has a louder voice. Yes. Um, or bake cookies or do something that's creative that will yeah. at least tell your creative self that they have a place to speak. Yeah. Play some music you love, dance, do whatever it is, you know, go out and take photos and create a book and share it with right, you. You know, <laughs> just now, like you don't know where I got it. Yeah. You know, and what's interesting was if I had gone out with the intention to take photos, to create a book, I probably would have never created a book because I would have gotten so caught into, is this photo? Okay. Is this look good? But sometimes what we do, we get to pull back in and say, wow, that's what that reason was for. So it, it makes sense after the fact. And, and I, I love that. that. Yeah. So you guys, what I want you to do today as you listen to this, whether it's live or in the replay or you come back later, go ahead and tag a photo down below. Just put a photo that, that yeah. makes you smile, that makes you yes. glow, that is inspired photo and just put it in here. Let's just like create a little today photo album of, of moments. Yeah. Um, I've probably oh, got a Oh, Eric, I've got an idea too. How okay, go ahead. We up it up a little bit, either of a moment that inspired you or take a picture of you doing something fun that's joyful today if you really want to bump that challenge of and oh, post well. it. So, uh, or we, of something you're doing today. So, yeah. There you go. And just fill yeah. the feed. I mean, why not? This is, I told you, you guys got to go find creative space. I'm going to provide yeah. the creative space. Yeah. You can inspire and encourage others to have a creative space moment. It's yeah. not complicated. It doesn't require an instruction manual for you high C's on the disc profile. <laughs> Just any photo that you feel makes you smile for a moment. Good yeah. morning, Marie. I see you stepping in the Yeah. Well. I want to go back over the book real quick as we wrap up. So available on Amazon, is it available directly through you as well? Yes, um, we, I am, I have 22 copies left until mid-May that you I have 21. <laughs> uh, no, 22. Well, unless okay. somebody just bought one. So, and then more will be coming in somewhere around the 8th to 15th. Um, so you can buy it on Amazon. You can PM me directly um, or you can email me. Um, we can put that, that email link in there. And then I would be happy to autograph and or personalize it for you. Um, I found that doing Facebook pay or PayPal is working well as a, a way to take payment if you don't do it through Amazon. The funds are coming back. So either way, it's not like you're taking away. Amazon does take a little bit bigger cut, but it gives me a little more control on being able to autograph. So that's, that's what I love. Um, and and yeah. I, I have a whole shelf you know, that's traveled around the world with me of books that have been given to me by authors and whatever. And uh, they're all autographed and personalized. And I'm just like, I always feel extra privileged and protective of my book yeah. children. Yes. Um, because I, a, a, book is, a book is a sacred place to me. And yeah. your book, like I said, I, 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 I love having it. I love yeah. the experience it provided. I am so humbled and grateful that you fought back. 
that you took the journey each and every day mm -hmm. and said, just one moment of peace is all I need to yeah. know that I can get the next one. Yeah. And so yeah. thank yeah. you for that gift. Thank you for the um, gift of your book. Thank you for the gift of the second book, which will be out by mid-June, maybe July. Hopefully. Like the way I challenge I love you. that. August 15th, by the latest. We'll just try to put that out there for some random reason. Okay. Oh, my August goodness. August 15th. There you go. It's been decreed and declared. <laughs> oh, it's boy. happening. August 15th, the second book. We'll be back to talk about that one, I'm sure. Um, any yeah. parting words for our guests? You know, You've been I... phenomenal, by the way. You oh. brought more joy and happiness than oh. I can contain. Oh, my gosh. We've, I've had so much fun. It's like, we're going to have to just talk weekly because it's so fun. I mean, maybe not on here, but just us. It we'll just so do fun. a different show. We'll just, finding right. joy. Oh, oh, I do have this thought for you. And then I have a parting word. So your okay. wisdom, your wise Wednesdays, you, you are wise enough, but maybe you could <laughs> call it like, what's up Wednesdays? And people could have questions and answers, but people could also share their successes that they've learned from you and, and the tidbits and what helped them. Because sometimes the questions are because we don't know, but when somebody else says it, that also gives us a way to learn. So Maybe it's a what's up Wednesday. So I, 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 I may take that. I will just a see thought. What percolates. Yeah, that's right. So a question that was posed to me when I kept because when you're kind of down again, you've got to keep bumping that comfort zone back up, you know, when you've let it shrink down and I kept hitting it and then I would sabotage it because, okay, I had enough joy and when's the bad coming? Cause trust me, when I had the joy of moving to the Island, the bad came quickly. So it was how much good can you actually accept or how good can you accept it? And I was like, whoa, wow, that's actually, that's actually pretty powerful because truly it's because we can't accept that level of good and we sabotage it. So how much good can I accept? I like that because there's nothing wrong with saying I just need right now. Yeah. I'm yeah. not. I don't need a full meal. I yeah. just need this little bit of good. Yeah. And if it shows up, I'll accept it completely. Yeah. Versus so much good might overwhelm me. Right. I can learn I'll to reject step into it from it. the beginning. So yeah. I like that fact that we don't need to necessarily live in like the buffet of good that yeah. we're okay with like, you yeah. know what I need right now. And that's often what I'll ask people when they're in the middle of it's like, what do you need right now? Like, yeah. Yeah. Like I could come and clean your house and do your dishes and provide. And they're like, no, what I really need right now yeah. is somebody to guard my front door. So people quit ringing the doorbell. Yeah. <laughs> kind of yeah. Okay. It's so how much it good, is. how much good can I accept? Yeah. And how much good second... can I, how much good can I accept? Just even keeping it that how much, how much good am I willing to allow in, you know, and I love that it could be that little tiny fragment that you said, all the way up to let's go joyride the universe, you know? I mean, yeah. it could be anywhere in there, but how much good am I willing to accept in this moment? Because, and that, I love that because when we're taking those baby steps out of sadness, depression, yeah. loss, fear, yeah. doubt, insecurity, yeah, too much might be what drives yeah. us back. Yeah. And so if you're saying, look, I, I just, if I could just find this much, yeah. Yeah. I'll take it all in with unconditional acceptance. Yes. And yes. then breathe. Yes. Because it's know that it. unconditional acceptance of this much versus yes. conditional acceptance yes. of this much that makes the difference. Yes. And what if I can't tolerate this much because my joy meter maxes out here? But if I, if I can learn that, wow, why, what's going on? Why am I being pulled back down and learn how to shift that? then maybe I can learn to accept a little bit more. And if I can learn to accept a little more, maybe I can learn to accept a little more. And then maybe I can learn to accept a little more. And then maybe I can fly and soar because, well, the heck with these levels, you know? <laughs> you guys, my so, own stuff. so she just took John Maxwell's law of the lid and applied it in a whole different way about raising oh. your lid, about raising <laughs> your good. I love the fact that it's universal thinking. Yeah. You are an amazing teacher, coach, photographer, author, inspirational, energy worker, woman extraordinaire. <laughs> oh. I am so honored and humbled that you accepted my request to be a Fun Friend Friday guest. Oh. Um, I truly see it as a divine crossroad that we connected through. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I mean, I know that you've spread more joy today 
than you're aware of. And it's going to just keep rippling. Mm. So thank oh, you. Thank you. When we wrap, I'm going to get a link to, you want them to private message or direct message or email you for direct copies of the book, or yes. they can go to Amazon and pick it up. Yes. Um, <laughs> if you go directly to Liz, she'll be happy to autograph it or personalize mm -hmm. it. It's yes. a great gift. It's a great mm -hmm. gift book, especially if you know somebody that's in a period of transition or change yeah. or that's struggling. It's a very yeah. gentle gift of encouragement. Mm -hmm. And so maybe having two or three in your, like I have extra books in my closet yeah. that I know are the right book to give to somebody at the right time, but I don't know who the person is. This is one of those books that if yeah. you hear of somebody that's experiencing an illness or a loss of a, a family or friend member might be the gift that gives mm -hmm. them the, the next mm -hmm. step. Yes. So maybe pick up a copy and just keep it quietly in the shelf waiting to see who it goes to. Yes. That's it, just my advice. And I'm happy to autograph it or personalize it, even if it's going as a gift. And even though there might be some showing up on Amazon, um, Kim's fulfilling those, so I wouldn't be able to autograph. But um, I, I can't believe I've almost sold my 200. But I will be getting more in personally, somewhere between the 8th and the 15th. So feel free to reach out. And even if I have none left right now, as soon as I come in, I'd be happy to do that for you. So... I know. I'm, in the meantime, and I was lucky to get the digital. I know. <laughs> I know. And yeah, and more will be coming with that. That's there's some stuff in the works. So well, keep me and keep us all in the loop. I Again, know. thank you guys. I know we went a little long today on Fun Friend Friday, but it was so much joy and fun. <laughs> Couldn't skip it. Thank you again. We're going to catch up on the posts and update the tags so people can find it. Don't forget your challenges today. Add a yes. photo so that we can have a little photo library in honor of our photographer, Liz. Um, go out and accept the possibility of peace. Yeah. And then just take a moment and just breathe into your joy. Mm -hmm. um, just take a moment and find joy. Yes. See you guys all Monday morning on another Success Life Live. Till then. Go out and live your life with success. It is yours. And you guys, you are so worthy of it. So worthy yes. of it. Don't let anybody tell you differently. Yes. Oh, thank you so much, Eric. It's been such an honor and pleasure. So, and for ah. everyone who's listening, and if I can answer any questions, please, I'm happy to do what I can. So, ah. yes. Thank you, guys. And don't forget yeah. to share it out. Somebody needs to hear it today. Yes. Bye-bye. <laughs> Talk to you in a bit. Bye-bye.